All right, so in this video, I want to take a look at passing arrays to functions in C++. And before we go and look at the actual syntax associated with passing arrays to functions, uh, I wanted to get across a couple of big ideas. So whenever we talk about passing an array to a function, the whole array itself is not actually being passed to the function. And this makes sense from an efficiency standpoint because whenever we think about very large size arrays, so maybe a 50,000 element or 500,000 million element array, uh, that would have a lot of processing associated with copying each element. And that's fundamentally what would happen anytime we would be passing, if it was passing the whole array, we'd have to pass a copy of the whole entire array to the function. So there's a lot of overhead associated with that and also a lot of storage space uh, they would be required to have two copies of a very large size array. So instead of doing that, we do have a much more efficient approach, and that is that we just simply pass a pointer to the first element of the array. So that's what's being passed whenever we actually pass an array. So with that pointer to the, to the very first element of the array, then we can make use of our index values to get to any other element in the array. So this works out quite well. So let's go over to Eclipse and uh, take a look at the syntax for this. Okay, so I've loaded up Eclipse and I've also loaded up the file that we were working with in the arrays intro video. Uh, so we wrote this program where we created an array and then we uh, hard-coded in some values. Then we printed out the array using this for loop. Then we asked the user to input some values so that the user could populate the array with their own values. And then we printed out the array again. So what we're going to be doing now is replacing each one of these for loops here with function calls. So we can see that um, this first for loop and this third for loop are the exact same for loop. So they'll be calling the same function to just simply print out the array. And then we'll write this function to allow the user uh, to input values into the array. So let's go ahead and go down below the uh, main function here. So we know that function definitions are independent of any other function definition. So this main function is a function definition for main. This is just where we start program execution. And now we're going to be writing uh, a new function. So this is going to be a void returning function since we're not actually doing anything that we need to return a value. So we're going to do void and we'll call it print array. And then we have to specify our formal parameter list. So for passing in an array, we got to pass in the type and then we have to specify a name for the array, and I'm going to just call it array, but it could be named anything. And then open square bracket, close square bracket, so that's needed to indicate that we are passing an array. And then comma, and then we're going to pass in the size or the length of the array. So using the uh, traditional uh, C, C++ array, then uh, the array doesn't know its size, so we have to pass that in. So we'll do int, and we'll use the identifier size, but you could use something like length or uh, something else. So that's it for the uh, function header. And then we'll do uh, open brace, close brace. And uh, let me get us a few more lines there so you can see that a little bit better. And the body of this is basically going to just be this exact same for loop. So this is uh, code that we can just copy and paste. So I'm going to just grab this code on these four lines and cut that from that location and then paste it down here. So the things that we need to change is this 5 is no longer needed to be hard-coded. We can just use the identifier size. Another thing that we need to change is this rainfall here to be array. So inside of this function here, we need to be using this name array. Uh, the identifier rainfall is out of scope inside of this function. So rainfall is only in scope inside of the main function. So we've got to use this array here. And don't forget that whenever we're passing an array, what we're really passing is just a pointer to the very first element of the array. So that's what's being passed in here. So the next thing we need to do is create the function prototype. So we'll just grab the uh, function header here and copy that and then go up above the uh, main function and paste it there and put a semicolon. And that will suffice for a function prototype. Now you can get rid of the identifier, so the identifiers are not actually required for the function prototype. So we could get rid of size and we could get rid of the uh, array there. And let's save this and build it and just see if it actually uh, compiles and links. And yeah, it looks like everything's compiling and linking okay. Now, the other thing that we need to do is actually need to make a function call. So this was just simply the function definition. And we'll go back to uh, where we remove that for loop and do a function call. So here we'll do print array. So just calling the function. And what we need to pass in is our array rainfall. 
whenever we do the function call, we just specify the name. We don't specify the open square bracket, close square bracket. That's only done inside of the uh, function header here. So we have that, and then we also need to pass in the size, which in this case is five. So let's go ahead and put a semicolon in there, and then save this and build it. Just make sure everything is still working. And we'll run this. So what should happen is, is we'll have the, uh, the array automatically populated here from lines 19 through 23. And then we'll call our print array and it'll print out the contents. So 2.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.0, 0 4.1, and 0 0.5. And then we'll ask the user to input some stuff. And then we'll uh, go back and do this. Actually, I guess uh, we should replace this bit of code as well. So let's go ahead and replace this code here with our, our function call. So uh, it's the same bit of code. We'll just do our same function call. So let's save that once again, build it. Everything's still building OK, and then we'll run it. We get uh, the values of the array being printed out, and now we can enter in whatever values we want to enter in for the array. So 1.2, uh, 3.2, uh, 4.5, 0 0.9, uh, 1.2 again and there you can see it being printed out. So both of those print arrays uh, function calls executed this bit of code that we just wrote. So now we have that particular function written. Let's go ahead and write another function to allow the user to enter in the, the amount themselves for each uh, element of the array. So what we're going to do is go down below the print array function and write another function. Now. You'll notice here that with this, it's a little bit different. Notice that we're actually manipulating or changing the contents of the array. So with the print array, we never were changing the contents of the array. So you may think that we need to return a value if we're actually manipulating the array, uh, but we don't need to do that. And the reason why we don't need to do that is it goes back to the big idea that whenever we're passing an array, we're actually passing a pointer to the first element of the array. So we're still referring to this array called rainfall. We're not referring to some new array. We're still re referring to the, the same array called rainfall uh, down here whenever we write the function. So this is going to be a void returning function since we have that characteristic there. And we'll just call it, uh, I don't know, I'll call it user uh, input array for lack of a better name. And once again, we'll have the same exact formal parameter list. So it's going to be double array, open square bracket, close square bracket, comma, int, size. So we still need to pass in the size. And then we'll do an open brace. And we got a close brace there. And I'm going to make a little bit more room so you guys can see that. And here, we'll just copy this bit of code that we had before. So just copy that. And then we'll paste it. And the only thing that we need to change is from 5 there, we'll change that to size. And from rainfall, we'll change that to array. And again, these names here are arbitrary in terms of what we use. It's just uh, a good name, I guess. Uh, what we need to do now is go back here to the main function and just call that uh, function that we wrote. So user input array, and we'll pass in rainfall, and we'll pass in five. And that is it. Again, the, the, uh, one of the big ideas here is that we didn't have to return anything because we're actually referring to the same array. So whenever we passed in rainfall here, we're not passing in a copy of the rainfall array. We're just simply passing in a pointer to the first element. So array down here is still referring to the same rainfall array. So let's go ahead and save this, build it. And oops, I forgot to do a uh, function prototypes, uh, function prototype for uh, our user input array. So let's go ahead and make that again. That's always a good thing to make mistakes sometimes. Uh, learning process, right? So here we have uh, the function prototype. And for this case, I guess I'll just leave the names in just to show you that it doesn't matter uh, whether we have the names in there or not. So I'll go ahead and save that, uh, build it again, and we'll run it. So we get the uh, our function call to print array, so it's printing out the contents, and then we can enter in the same thing. So the look and feel of it is still the same, it's just structured differently 
so that we can make better use of our code that we've written. We don't have to replicate stuff now that we have these functions here. So I'll just put in some values uh, for rainfall. It really doesn't matter uh, what values we put in there. But uh, that's pretty much it uh, in terms of being able to um, write code to pass an array to a function. It's kind of unusual syntax. And the other thing that we need to remember is that we're really not passing the whole entire array. We're just simply passing a pointer to the first element of the array. And that saves us big time in terms of processing power and also storage space as well on the computer. Uh, so that's it for this video.